Do you want to know what being a wrestler is? It's a job. Yep, some people work in a bank, some people sell food, some people put on face paint and go, oh, I'm a clown. There's varying degrees of good and bad, but ultimately we all go to our place of employment and sometimes we're pissed off. It's why sometimes a sports entertainer will make it known they're not happy. So I'm Sam from What Culture. Please hit that subscribe button. This is 10 wrestlers who told you they were pissed. Number 10, Dean Ambrose on WWE Chronicle. Clearly no one from WWE watches their own shows because in 2018, when Dean Ambrose was returning from injury, he he had a whole documentary where he said over and over again he wasn't happy. Yep. The soon-to-be John Moxley may not have realized it at the time, but as he said on Talking Jericho, in hindsight, it was during his rehab when he had a change of heart, and it's all caught on camera. I mean, the man did want to wrestle, he just didn't want to do it in WWE. Whoops. His main point of contention was that he wasn't able to mix it up, much like a lead singer of a band was able to do. Because of course, Vince McMahon has his ways and you better stick to it. When you do watch it with this in mind too, you can almost see his eyes screaming, I don't want to do this style anymore. During the last scene, Ambrose even says, I'm not going to read some script and try to play out some little fantasy ending. That's not my life. And do you want to know what he did soon after? He left. Not that big of a surprise. Number nine, Drew McIntyre doesn't want to become a cartoon. So I could be wrong, but it kind of felt like in 2021 that Vince McMahon finally realized that Drew McIntyre was Scottish. I mean, he had always been Scottish, but from nowhere, McIntyre was cutting promos telling us about his homeland. It felt like sooner or later, he'd be all excited about the Loch Ness Monster. It was really on the nose. It's the reason he got that big old sword too, because Braveheart. And as Drew said after he was able to stop all this, he thought it was ridiculous. In an interview with New York News, Days, he even described all this as not so interesting stories, so he knew. The weirdest part is that this felt like a massive step back. Usually, you get this when you step through the door, not after you've established yourself as a main eventer and been the flipping WWE champion. Great, Xavier Woods shoots. Xavier Woods is such a positive person and so damn successful, I doubt he is unhappy with his WWE position. He is a huge reason the New Day have been as entertaining as they have been over the last six years, and no matter what happens, he shall land on his feet. He's one of those dudes. This doesn't mean he just sits and smiles though. Woods is too smart. So when we were building up to the Survivor Series, which is when WWE goes all brand warfare, Xavier released a video where he asked what exactly Raw and SmackDown were fighting over. And he's right. Makes no sense. He's such a hero as well because he said both his feuds with the Brawling Brutes and Jinder Mahal and Shanky were boring, but again, it was spot on. At the time he said this, they had outstayed their welcome. I would assume he was legit annoyed when all those new rules came in which stopped Woods doing his YouTube gaming material for a little while because he has done such a good job with that. But yeah, the reason he can do this is because he knows the deal. We all agree with him anyway. Number seven, Big E buries a scripted line. And here's another reason why the New Day rock. You can throw Kofi Kingston in there too as we're here. They're all just great. This happened back in 2017 when it was meant to be the New Day versus the Shining Stars. And if you've forgotten about them, Primo and Epico just became sales reps for Puerto Rico. As ever, I have no idea, don't worry about it. Because most wrestlers in WWE are handed lines before they speak, however, Big E said, we have to take the shine off the shining stars. For as quick as anything he threw in, I didn't write that. Love this man. He also dropped this in as if he thought some people wouldn't register that he had actually said it. <laughs> you can just imagine this backstage. You want me to say what? Number six, John Morrison wants a push because he should have got a push. As simple as that, really. I'm still baffled WWE released him. I mean, the dude should have been given a world title run and don't at me because I mean it. The man had smashed it on the outside world too, which is why he was brought back to WWE in 2019. And yet for some reason, the powers that be forgot almost 10 years had passed and just had him back in his own role. And this was fine. Morrison and The Miz were great together, but it had to evolve and go somewhere. And it never did. For a good while, Johnny couldn't even get on TV, which could be why on one show he pulled open his ring jacket to show a hashtag more Morrison sign stitched into the sides. Now, this very well could have been a joke, but was it born out of an actual feeling? I would say so. I mean, Morrison left WWE first time around as he wanted more opportunities, and here he was, not getting them again. Number five, Seth Rollins tweets about Brock Lesnar. Seth Rollins is underrated, and I mean it. The man has been a top draw star for years now, and any promotion on the planet would be better with him on the roster. He can do it all. In 2022, he also had those three matches with Cody Rhodes, which both guys deserve huge praise for. And rightfully so, he probably feels like he should be in a main event on a big stage. 
And then WWE announced SummerSlam would be headlined by Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar around 45,689. Almost instantly, Rollins quote tweeted this with a facepalm emoji, and this goes back to what we just said. Was this playing into his character? Of course. Does he also think it's true? Yes, would be my guess. It's likely not even that these two are going to go at it again. It's probably because he wants to know why he's not involved, because he should be involved. Seth has been a constant hero for WWE, and that actually may be the problem. They know he can do everything, so they put him in whatever situation works. He is the legend though, Hall of Fame no doubt. Number four, Rusev wonders what more he can do. We don't have to debate this one. Rusev went on Lillian Garcia's Chasing Glory podcast and actually said he didn't know what else he could do to appease the WWE hierarchy. Chilling in 2019, the now Miro was referencing how over the Rusev Day group an act got, only to be told that this was a fluke and nobody was ever going to capitalize on it. As soon as the cheers got to their loudest, the stable was broken up, and after that, everybody involved floundered. And that wasn't their fault, but the fans were disappointed. It was hard to get your hopes up after that. The real sad part of the conversation is Rusev sounds utterly confused about why any of this happened, and boy, was that proved true. Cut to AE where he's spouting fire promos about murdering people, and you'll start to ponder all of this as well. I mean, it was right here, and we just didn't do anything with it, because why would we? Number three, Sami Zayn says what we're all thinking. Speaking on Corey Graves' After the Bell podcast, Sami admitted there were times he was frustrated with the creative process because things are so chaotic down to the wire that the entire process feels like it may explode. Yep, that'll do it. It's important to note that Zayn also spent most of this episode saying how happy he was with his current role, that he feels like he has plenty of freedom, but you've got to figure he's not making this up and every now and then is a little bit peeved that events backstage can be crazy. Sammy noted too that really this is a testament to the whole crew that they can sort it out every single week and that is true. On the other hand though, maybe just write the show before the show and then get on with the show. Just a thought. Number two, Ronda Rousey can't hide her feelings. The problem Ronda Rousey faced when she dedicated some serious time to WWE were the strange folk who got out their pitchforks and said she didn't deserve it. I assume this was based on the fact she was using her success in another sport and then jumped across. But do you think she became a megastar by accident? No, she worked for it and all of this is the result of that effort. It all came to a head for some after the 2018 Survivor Series because after an awesome match with Charlotte Flair, the queen beat the ship out of her with a kendo stick only for Rhonda to leave to a chorus of boos. It was clear that Rousey was not expecting this as it was etched all over her face. And as she would talk about publicly, this really pissed her off, especially as it happened in what was essentially her hometown. It became a whole thing after this, as you know, and my word. By the end of it, Rhonda was just verbally wrecking fans all over the place. <laughs> How does this stuff get so out of control? Number one, Mustafa Ali goes off on Raw Talk. Bless Mustafa Ali, because he does not give a ship. I mean, for one, he openly asked for his release in January 2022 after what sounded like a serious disagreement over creative. We don't know that for sure. And I would get it if Ali just wanted that regardless. Man doesn't get used anywhere near enough. If you really want a window into this, however, go watch Raw Talk from January 2021. Coming after Legends Night, which WWE really does love, Mustafa said that he thought it was ludicrous another three hours was dedicated to the likes of Hulk Hogan and not new faces who were desperate to make their own name. He got away with it, if that's the right term, as it was done under the guise of him being in retribution, but come on now. This is someone who felt like he had a point to prove and wasn't allowed to prove it, which is the same today. So not sure if this did anything, but still, we've got the message, Ali. We have definitely got it. 